Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Ghost and Spirits video. Alright, let's go ahead, let's talk about a whole new entry here, brand new series based on your new suggestions. This one having to do with a new suggestion, and the reason I picked this one was because it stood out because it has to do with a haunted object. Normally in a lot of my other past videos, um, basically we're talking about a haunted person or in some cases a haunted entity, but no, in this case it's quite rare. It has to do with a haunted object who would know that sometimes these things uh, these inanimate objects the things that are man-made can apparently take on a life of their own even in the afterlife and then continue to haunt a particular location and then I also picked this one because it has to do with an even rarer stuff in this case involving a train if you can believe that who would known that a train of all things can become something in terms of, of, of a haunted stance uh, after its usage after it's essentially been closed and if you go to this particular location then you'll be able to have a good chance of seeing this haunted train in its action and it has to do with this you're looking at it now it's known as the gray train of dumped hail I hope I'm saying that correctly, the Great Train of Dump Hale, and it's a train that's located somewhere there in Scotland. So let's go ahead, let's talk about all the information tied to this very unique uh, railway station and its haunted train. So as far as its first creation, you have to go back quite a ways, in this case to 1863. So it was open for a very long time, almost 100 years, in fact, before its closure. And it was created with a company, uh, I think it was called the Inverness and Perth Junction Railway. Uh, I guess it was a prominent railway of sorts when it first uh, basically was created. Its layout is essentially set to have both um, uh, people being uh, serviced and then also a great location for goods and services so as long as I guess that stuff ran uh, either people were needing its needs or uh, something on the lines of uh, merchants and companies needing to have something for transportation then this place enjoyed some pretty good success and so much so in fact that again it lasted for about a good hundred years or so there was a there was a signal box in fact that was there I think this is the picture of it here and you'll notice that uh, it's, it's, it has a lot of controls for so definitely a place in terms of of it having a lot of activity during its heyday but cut to about almost a hundred years later it seems like most of the farmland or most of the population decided to move elsewhere uh, the way it reads on the website that I found it said dump hill lost its good service on November 2nd 1964 so either they lost it due to I guess lack of population lack of customer base or uh, companies decided to move elsewhere who knows sometimes these things happen let's say a new tax rate is assessed on a place then companies start leaving that location or let's say uh, something a big company closes altogether something that employed a lot of people and then when that happens it just trickles down to the rest of the businesses either way though this location this railway and its train uh, no longer had its service in much need and cut to about a year later it was completely closed on October 18th 1965 so just a little over a hundred years with regards to its existence and in fact you're looking at a picture here related to the remains of the station quite neat I don't know if this is still something that you can still visit uh, as it looks today because this picture is from 1997 but presumably you can still go there to that location and then see something I don't think uh, at least from a cost effective standpoint you would have a, uh, the city there the government whatever is the case case go in and demolish everything just to replace it Why, when it's much more cost effective to just leave it there so there's a good chance if you go there to that place you might be able to see living history you'll see this building and everything left basically to rot and so you'll have a good opportunity to just see it how it looked like in its heyday but even when it was open, let alone after it was closed, there was still some activity, some haunted activity happening to it. For example, on 1921, in what was considered a clear winter night, there was a gentleman by the name of John McDonald. He stated he was heading home, 
presumably walking along the pathway towards Dump Hill to another place called the Dava Railway Line. And then that's when he saw, uh, first heard and then also saw a locomotive, a full-blown locomotive with uh, what he described as a full head of steam coming across him, like basically passing him by. And when he did so, he saw that it was pulling four carriages, but when he saw, looked inside, there was nothing in them. Um, it seemed like these carriages, uh, they, they were on, the lights were on, everything looked good, except there was no people on the inside. But then when he took a closer look to the bottom of the train, that's when he was shocked to discover that it was traveling about two feet above the tracks themselves. Clearly, that would stand out you know when you see something like that uh, you probably do a double take and then a triple take and then absolutely you're looking at a train that is essentially floating in mid-air but it was a train altogether like it was creating the steam like I was mentioning earlier there was a the sound the full uh, notion the full um, uh, motion of, of wheels, the steel wheels, whatever is the case, everything in terms of the usual sounds that something like that, a big train like that makes, it was there in front of him as it was passing him by. And this was again in 1921, while this 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 location was still active, and then while it still had, in this case, this great train, um, also doing services to and from its location. So even during its heyday, even during its open stands, it had its own haunted status um, at that point. And then cut to afterward, let's say once it was closed, because again it was somewhere around uh, 1965 when everything was shut down for this train there was another circumstance involving this uh, this is this experience apparently there was a, um, a ghostly train that still haunts that location now now where the tracks once laid because somewhere along the lines I mentioned earlier that um, that that railway station seems to be there to this day but the tracks that made up the entire railway are now gone nothing is laying there anymore don't know why exactly maybe in that case it did make more sense to strip the tracks because of the um the metal within them or the steel within them who knows maybe uh, something on those lines i know here in austin we have several uh, tr uh, tracks that used to have a lot of trains passing them, but then they were shut down. But the tracks are still there, even though I passed the, I passed one just this past week. The metal tracks or steel tracks are still there to this day. But in this case, these tracks are gone. But if you go to that place, then you'll be able to see, in that case, uh, this train passing by, this ghostly train. And then also, people have seen on the inside where they see either A, no one is seen inside in terms of, like, let's say, passengers or anyone else that happens to be working that ghostly train. Or in other cases, they do see it. But in also other situations, they see it from afar. Like, instead of seeing it, let's say, at that same railway station, no, they see it at a different nearby station kind of like it's passing from them away from them so uh, it's it's going off into the distance in other words so that's where um, another unique situation seems to come by and yet other times people report were out of the blue when there is no in this case presumably uh, it's supposed to be not surprising whenever you have an encounter with a train I mean clearly you'll hear them from far away you'll even see them from far away you'll have many many seconds in other words to be prepared before it passes by but in this case there are circumstances where people state that they are suddenly blown backwards by a rush of air as if a train suddenly appeared out of nowhere steaming ahead full blown as if it was an operation and then it just passes by them and when that happens of course they're almost aghast you know wondering what the hell was that in terms of a train suddenly appearing and then all the same motion of it like the rush of air everything in terms of the noise passing them by and then that's it it is gone no known instance of course of this train creating any kind of physical damage to the people it just seems to be just a train that just is operating even in its afterlife of sorts but as far as yes um, those type of encounters those are probably the most scariest ones because imagine that there you are near that railway station or what used to be that railway station minding your own business and then suddenly this huge big thing or the ghostly image of it passes you by at full-blown speed I'm sure it would scare 
scare a lot of people, especially if it unfortunately plays that very loud whistle that trains are known to have. But that's it. That's pretty much all the information associated with this haunted object, this great train of the tail. If anyone has any more info, anything else I might have missed, please post those comments below. I love this notion. The idea that you have, in this case, an inanimate object that is still haunting a location. How did it get that way? How does something involving a man-made object become haunted? Was it because of the person operating it? Was it something else? Was there something like a sinister passenger, someone cursing it? Who knows? But it just definitely adds a whole other level as opposed to, let's say, your average story of a haunted person or a haunted entity, as I was mentioning earlier. I don't know. It just seems to attract my attention far more to know that I could run uh, into a situation involving a haunted train than, let's say, a haunted person or haunted ghost entity stuff so anyways if anyone knows more info like uh, from experience anybody around that area there in scotland anyone have friends family members whatever is the case that knows of this lore please post those comments below you know i always love the um, personal experiences people have there so right everybody thanks again as always take care